Okay, so in this extension, what we're going to do is we're going to add the ability to apply text over an image that we upload into our editor. It's going to look a lot like the Snapchat feature with the semi-transparent background. So the first thing that we're going to do, in order to add the text, we need to give the user a place to type in some text and then a button so they can submit that. So go to your index.html file and we're going to add um, an input, a submit button, and also some text that will describe to the user what it is that they're what it is that they should use this input for. Now you can put this input wherever you want in your project. I want it to be the last thing that the person adds when they're editing a photo just to make the process smoother. So I'm going to put it underneath of my buttons but still inside of my editor's div. The first thing I'm going to do is use the H4 tag to give it a little heading with some instructions. I'm going to say add a message over your image and then use the closing h4 tag then I'm going to use the input tag set it to type equals text because they're typing text in give it an ID so that we can get this element easily of message and then give it a placeholder value this placeholder is what will show up um, default in the text box type a message I am going to save that and then refresh my page and we can see our input down here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a button so that the user can click that button to submit their text and add it to the image. We're going to say button ID equals, let's name it submit, close this tag, in between our button tags we'll say add text. That will be the text that shows up on our button. You can make it say whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to have it say. Refresh your page. And you'll see that our button is also already styled because we styled the button tag in our CSS. Now we're ready to start adding some JavaScript to make this work. Now, the way that we add text on our image is we're going to draw text over the canvas of our image. That canvas is created whenever we apply a filter or a slider, but right now we don't have a canvas created when we look load an image in. So we need to do that. The canvas that we're talking about for this project is the same canvas that we did in the Matisse project. So we're going to be adding text just like that extension for that one. So find your load input handler function. It should be towards the top of your code. And inside this function, but on the last line, so under image element set attribute src url create object url, we are going to add the Canaan method that will create a canvas of our image that we load. So start um, by saying Cayman with a capital C, parentheses, quotation marks, pound image. Outside of the quotes, you should have a comma. And then we'll say function with no parameters. Opening curly, closing curly, closing parentheses. I'm going to add my closing semicolon now. Save that. We'll say this dot revert true semicolon and this will make a canvas over image. I'm going to test just to make sure I can still load my image and that I don't have a bug in this part and we can see my pug puppy right there. Great now we're ready to actually start writing some code that will allow us to apply text. I'm going to add this code towards the bottom of my project just to keep it organized underneath my save button code but before my closing last line. All right so the first thing we want to do is we want to get the input that someone types in for their message. So we're going to declare a variable named text input and we're going to set it to get the HTML element document .get element by ID. The ID is going to be message. So if we come really quickly back to our index, we gave this input an ID of message and we're getting whatever someone types in there. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to write a function that will apply the text. So to start a new function, we'll say function. We'll name our function apply text with a T capitalized. We're not passing it any parameters. We need our opening curly, our closing curly bracket, and our closing semicolon. And then we're going to write a lot of lines of code inside of here. The first thing that we are going to do, just like in our Matisse project, we need to get the canvas 
And then we need to set the context of the canvas and set some things for the fill style of the text that we're going to put in here. So we're inside this function, we're going to say var canvas that goes and gets our canvas element by its ID of image. So document dot get element by ID image semicolon save that change. Underneath we're going to get the context by saying var ctx equals canvas dot get context. Remember we're going to set this to 2D. This might look familiar from our last project. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, set the fill style for our canvas. So we'll say ctx.fill style. This will be the background color of the box that will show up for the message. So we're going to have a box and then the text will show up over this box. We'll say RGBA. This is inside of quotes, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5. The A value stands for how transparent something is. Um, and so a transparency of 0.5 would mean that we can actually see through the box. If it is 1, then we wouldn't be able to see through it. I am going to add semicolon. And then the next thing that we'll want to do is we'll say var box top equals canvas dot height divided by 2. And right now I'm going to use this value of minus 30. So what box top is, is we're going to set, we're creating this variable named box top that's going to tell us how where the top of the box should be. And this is really just to make our next line of code a little cleaner looking. We could just use um, canvas.height divided by 2 minus 30 inside of the next one. But we need to actually have it. So now that we've set the color of the rectangle that will be behind our message, we actually need to call the, um, the fill rect method to fill in the rectangle. Um, so ctx.fill rect. Zero is going to be the starting um, uh, x location. Box top is going to be the starting y location. We want it to be the entire width of the canvas, so canvas.width. And then the height of the box itself is going to be 65 pixels. And we'll say semicolon. The next thing we need to do is we need to, so now we have this rectangle that would show up on our image but we haven't put any text in it yet. So we need to set some styles for our text and then we will um, be done and then call the method to actually put the text on our canvas and then we'll be done writing this function. So ctx.font to set our font. Um, I'm gonna set it to 50px and I'm gonna use a fancy font that I already have in my project. So if I go back to my index uh, file, I can see that I've already loaded the railway font and if I go to my styles I can actually get the right name and use that as the font that will show up in my project. Semicolon. Alright, I want my text to be white so ctx.fill style equals white ctx.text align so I want my text to be centered and we can use this um, property to set it to the center Oops. ctx text align equals center semicolon and then ctx dot fill text this method will actually fill in and draw the text on the canvas we're gonna say text input dot value this what this means right here is go and get text input, which we said was get whatever someone has typed into our input box, get the value of that, and that's what we're going to fill in. And then we will say fill this in so that it's canvas width divided by 2 and box top plus 50. Now, 
Canvas dot width divided by two will help us to put this in the center. Um, box top plus 50, this is gonna help us position our text to look like it is in the vertical center of the, of the rectangle. You'll be able to change these numbers to be something that looks right for your own project later on. All right, and that's gonna be our function for applying the text. The next thing that we're gonna need to do is we actually need to call this function um, when we click on the submit button. So outside of our apply text function, I'm gonna say bar submit text. We're gonna go get our submit button so that we can listen for when it's clicked. So document dot get element by ID. The ID is submit semicolon. Now we can say when submit text is clicked, so submit dot submit text dot on click, then we're gonna call our function apply text. Let's go ahead and refresh our page and test out what we've got so far. Okay, so now if I type a message and click the button add text, it will add a message. But if we, right now, if we click on the sliders or we click on the filter buttons, it makes our message go away. So we want to be able to fix that. So the next thing we need to do is actually call this function apply text whenever, um, we use the render Cayman function. So for our filter buttons, our slider, and also for our save button so that we can have it save the text. Because right now, when we click save, it doesn't save the message that we've typed in. Okay, so first go to your change slider handler function. Go find that, which is gonna be up towards the top. Here's mine. We're gonna make a change right here after dot render. After dot render, what we're gonna say we're gonna call a function, sorry. So function, parentheses, and then opening curly, closing curly, hit enter. So now for this function right here, I have a closing curly bracket, a closing parenthesis, and a closing semicolon. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, inside this function, if text input has a value, so dot value, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the function apply text. So this conditional is saying if someone's actually typed a message in, go ahead and apply the text um, whenever we change the slider. Now if you look at the changes, we now have four sets of closing brackets, so please make sure that you're being careful as you make these changes, that you don't mess the brackets up. That's most likely where you're gonna make a mistake. We still need to update our filter button and our save button handlers. So I'm gonna go find my filter button function right here. After dot render, we're gonna say function, opening curly bracket, closing curly bracket, hit enter. Inside of this function, we're gonna do the same conditional if text input dot value, opening curly, closing curly. If we have a value typed into the text box, we're gonna call apply text. I'm gonna add my closing semicolon right there. Again, four sets now, closing brackets for this function. The last one that we're gonna do this for is our save button handler. So come down and find that. After dot render, we're gonna say function, empty parentheses, the same exact thing, opening curly bracket, and then closing curly bracket. We're gonna say apply text. And I'm actually gonna move this closing bracket outside of this dot save image. So it'll call apply text and then it will save the image. And we're gonna go ahead and save that change. Now we're gonna come test out what we just did. So refresh the page, load an image,
So after this dot save image, I need to add my closing parenthesis. Save that, refresh, choose a file. Okay, great, works. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try adjusting the sliders and typing a message. Click add text, great. And now I should be able to save. And we can see that my text shows up over my image. And that is gonna be part 10.